In this InspiredInsider.com interview, we talk with Svetlana Kim. She, with one dollar in a pocket and not a word of English, came to the U.S. and has received compliments and letters from people like Hillary Clinton, President Barack Obama, and many more. Find out how she did it and much more coming up right now. Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Svetlana Kim. Just to tell you a little bit about Svetlana, she immigrated to the United States from Leningrad, Russia in 1991. She worked her way from a cleaning lady to a successful stockbroker. Today she's a motivational speaker, consultant, community leader, and she was 2008 Asian Academy Hall of Fame inductee. She's received compliments and letters from people like Hillary Clinton, President Barack Obama and many more. She's been featured in the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, MSNBC, among many others. Thank you so much, Svetlana, for, for coming here today. Thank you so much for sharing this moment. <laughs> now, fun fact about Svetlana, which I didn't mention yet, is a couple things. She loves books, shoes, chocolate, perfumes, and things that awaken the senses. Her living room is a bright yellow color and she even has a separate room for meditation which is pure white. Is that right? Got it. So Svetlana basically is the perfect person to talk to us about overcoming personal challenges. You know, She started with one dollar in her pocket, not a single word of English, to a leader among leaders. And Svetlana, can you tell us about one of those emotional low points in the past? Well, uh, that is a great question. Uh, there, were, there were so many. Um, in fact, I think the lowest point uh, in my life was, and if I get emotional, please forgive me. No, uh, feel free. I was homeless. Um, I escaped from Russia in 1991, three months before the collapse of Soviet Union. And my story starts with a line, it all started with a loaf of bread that didn't even exist. The reason is that all these products disappeared from the shelves in 1991, so I was standing simply to buy bread for two days on a row. And I encounter my old classmate, who was a mafia guy on a black market in Russia. So he was making lots of money, uh, selling tickets from uh, Moscow or St. Petersburg, Leningrad back then to New York. And it's uh, uh, important to know that there was no flights to any other cities in the United States, so I only had a way to come to New York. So I had less than 10 days to raise $900. Can you imagine my scholarship was one dollar forty cents. That's a lot of money to me. Uh, my father was a physician, medical doctor. His salary was five dollars sixty cents, and this is all verified by Wall Street Journal by the records. Because when I was writing a book, I didn't know the conversion. I was buying a uh, ticket on the blood market. Uh, the markup is high. So that's the story. Uh, my whole life is one string of pearls, and each pearl is a unique event in my life. And my grandmother's name is Bayok, White Pearl, so I wear pearls to honor her wisdom and always happy to share pearls of her wisdom with, uh, with, with people. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, that's... Uh, okay. What about... Go ahead. He can English, have no place to stay, uh, not knowing anyone, not traveling to foreign country. You know, everything was different. The sky, water tastes different. That was the lowest moment in my life. And I was on Mission Street in San Francisco, and I saw a homeless person sleeping in a box. And that exactly what I saw in a book about LA um, just before I left Russia. So I was truly horrified. And that fear of 
being homeless one day haunted me for many, many years. In fact, to be honest, until about a couple of years ago, I established uh, an overnight program at Calvary Women's Shelter in Chinatown as a first uh, volunteer to spend night in a shelter. And I did that on the part of Junior Lake on Washington, D.C. And really, truly, giving back joining this nonprofit organization, that's where I learned my skills, uh, communication skills, writing skills, most important fundraising skills that led me to fundraise for uh, Hillary Clinton on her presidential campaign. So it's really uh, experience and every moment that we live is a gift. How, many, how did you, what happened when you got here? What was that like when you first got to the U.S.? Um, I was sitting at JFK on December 18, 1991. I had big fur hat that my mother made for me from Sable. That was a gift from a hunter to my dad. Um, and I had a um, coat, fur coat. I looked like I came from Alaska. It was raining in San Francisco, and I knew there is no winter in California, but it was extremely freezing in Russia. So I put a little raincoat. In fact, I only brought few books with me, a uh, few uh, pieces of uh, or two t-shirts, one pair of jeans. I didn't even have a, a suitcase because I could not afford it. And I have this little backpack that was made by my grandmother uh, in my uh, in my uh, in my bedroom right now. So I keep that. And I, you know, I travel a lot, and I moved. And uh, that I bring with me everywhere I go. So uh, it was very strange not to speak. You know, when you're 23 years old, and um, I'm very bubbly. I am a talker. I've been always talker. <laughs> and my parents were my parents were uh, you know uh, they were worried about me because is this girl serious? Is, I mean, I've been always, uh, a, you know, a good student, but they were like, she talks so much. You know, the culture in Russia is different. And when I came to the United States, everyone is drinking a bottle of water. So I drink about, you know, eight to ten glasses of water. Um, I was surprised that people would say hi on the street. Oh, that is not common in Russia. Maybe today it is because the country is so international, but not back then. So... Um, not being able to speak and to understand was psychologically very challenging for me. And besides all the problems that I had, how to be, you know, legal in a country, how to, you know, uh, get permission to work. Uh, so I literally had, I lived through every single problem. <laughs> yeah. So how did you overcome some of those? You know, when people said, I have no money to start the business, I'm like... Mm. I had no money to pay for bus fare, 75 cents back then. I, you know, sometimes would get a free ride, or most of the time I would walk. In fact, my first pair of shoes that I bought at Payless for $5, that's the company I would like to talk or to do consulting because they lasted for two years, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you overcome some of those low points? I had good foundation because I was uh, raised by my grandmother, uh, by Yoke, White Pearl. And every moment, every dark moment, I would just close my eyes and just dip into that feeling of love. I just, I think it's the faith. I knew I would be okay. I knew. So today I'm sitting in her shoes that she gave it to me as a gift in 1975. Wow. She was a renaissance woman. She even, you know, <laughs> repaired her own shoes. I can see the nails. But who would knew that, you know, one day I would wear, that I, they fit me perfectly. They're so comfortable. And I treasure them. You know, I only wear them inside the house or when I talk at the conferences, you know. So walking in her shoes is a big challenge. <laughs> yeah, literally, right? 
So what is it that you think of when you, because your your grandmother really inspires you. When you think about her and what she did, what are those thoughts that go through your head that inspire you to to move and push forward? Well, um, by your experience, um, immigrated to Russia from Korea in a cold autumn of 1899. So Russian Tsar Nicholas uh, invited 13 families to colonize far east of Russia in 1861. Uh, that year, Russia freed all the slaves. It was a lot of changes in Russia. People came from Korea because back then Korea had famine. People had, it was probably like North Korea today. So the borders were open and people would come to Russia to pursue better opportunities, uh, to pursue better life. So her uh, parents immigrated from Korea to Russia. My grandmother was born in Russia in 1917, and she was accepted to college in 1936. Hmm. So she was uh, incredibly talented, genuine, funny, hardworking uh, person. So she's uh, truly one of this. You know what? I read a story uh, which I shared in my book. Every pearl, every tiny pearl, evolves from a core. And that core is simply an irritant or a grain of sand or a piece of fish bone. An oyster produces nacre, the layers of nacre that forms that beautiful pearl simply to protect itself. And I think all these irritants in our lives makes our beautiful Right. That's a good point. So, all my major obstacles, and I said obstacles, not failures, because my grandmother never believed in failures. She believed in life lessons. So, what's been, so going from that, entering the U.S. with a dollar and homeless, and you overcame some of these low points, what's been one of the proudest moments that you've had? Wow, so now I can afford this kind of shoe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, I know. But, you know, women love shoes. I love shoes. And I think, you know, no matter what you have, this shoes or my grandmother's shoes, everything outside, outside changes, constantly changes, right? But the core that our infinite true self inside that resides right here in our heart area never changes. And that's the message that we so often look outside and we find so many reasons what we have or don't have. But really, truly, everything we need for beautiful life resides right here. Yeah. So some of those things, I know some of the proudest moments, what are some of the um, cards or messages you've received? My proudest moment is, it's all the messages, and it's, I'm sorry, I'm trying, all the messages. Oh, wow. That, and it's not everything that people write, how this book impacted them. In fact, one of the uh, a woman who writes to me is Linda Linda Stanko. She's on Facebook as Z T A K O. She is from Welland, Canada. And look at how creative she is keeping in touch with me. Look at that. Unique blue hmm. story. You know, her message is that, you know, she's writing to me how unique I am. You know, look at that card, very creative. She sends me the beautiful card of her family. Look at that. Send wow. out cards. This is from she just, she read your book? Is that how you know her? She knows you? Book. She saw me speaking at Bob Berg and Tom Scott's conference, the Extreme Business uh, Makeover uh, 2010. And look at that. Look at that, what she creates. Huh. I would like to be known as an intelligent woman, a courageous woman, a loving woman, a woman who teaches 
by being Maya Angelou. What's um? Will you hold up your book just so people know can see the title? Do you have it handy? And and the title, we will, will you read it there just in case people are listening to this and not watching? The title is A White Pearl and okay. I, a okay. memoir of a political refugee okay. by Svetlana Kim. And if you forget the title, my name is complicated to spell. Uh, just remember pearls, white mm -hmm. pearls. Mm -hmm. So going, Svetlana, from some of those low points and overcoming them to some, you're just receiving tons of praise and cards. What are some of those pivotal moments that you remember putting you on the path for success, where you maybe hit a wall? Um, it was uh, the night when my airport, the airline, Russian airline, my airplane ticket was expiring, and people said, what do you mean by expiring? Back in 1990s, um, we were allowed to visit uh, foreign countries, uh, United States, uh, Israel, Germany, by purchasing a round-trip ticket. You cannot leave just buying one-way ticket. So within the period of three months, you could leave any time. You have to make the reservation again. So the night before my ticket was expiring, I was agonized. You know, I was 23. I had no one in the United States. Um, I had no friends, no family. I had no job. And uh, because of the stress, I became sick. Um, I had, uh, you know, I just did not feel well. I gained a tremendous amount of weight. Um, so I was making the biggest decision, and making decision is difficult, but making a decision that will impact your life once and forever is truly impossible. It is possible, uh, but it's very, very difficult. So I decided to stay in the United States. So that morning, I went out. Um, and decided that I need to get a job. So I saw a woman pushing a stroller, and I followed her. She stopped by, she entered the building, I entered the building, and she puts a note, and it says, Nanny. And I can read it, it sounds like Russian Nanny. And I turned around, she was gone. So I ran outside, and I started screaming. I said, hello, hello, hello. She stopped and looked at me, and I don't know how I explained that I really want that job. And she hired me. Hmm. The woman was a movie producer. <laughs> she was what? She was, she's a movie producer. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so um, my whole life is really is um, a beautiful uh, string of pearl of all these lucky events. And I think luck is one of the... Uh, ingredients is for uh, success. I really do, uh, but it's a, it's a it's a topic where I can talk <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it seems like you're. I mean, you're a true connector. You seems like you know everyone. What's another one of these moments where you remember connecting with someone, sort of in in those circumstances? Just um, whether you you met them, you know, randomly or you kind of reached out to them. Wow, that's a great question. I think I'm going to start with this. Um, Carol Adrian was my coach, my first coach in 2002, 11 years ago. I believe in numerology because uh, Carol, uh, she's a numerologist and uh, she is a great, uh, a great person. She wrote the book, many books, but one of the books that changed my life, it's called The Purpose of Your Life. Mm -hmm. She was on Oprah Winfrey show as a scene on Oprah. Numerology, she did my chart, numerology chart. I was sitting at the desk as a stockbroker, and I was crying. I was so miserable. I just took time to pass this very rigorous examinations to get my license. I went to the bookstore and I saw this book and I was intrigued because 
I was searching for purpose of my life. So see, all the signs around us, they give us messages. We have to be just open. So I purchased this book, and I'm reading, and my manager said, you can't read this kind of books at work, Lana. I knew the message that I, I just don't, don't, I'm not going to be there that long. So I called Carol, and accidentally, she lives in El Cerrito, which is 40 minutes away from San Francisco, and she said, come. So I hired her to do the numerology chart, and she said to me, after asking very similar question that you asked, Jeremy, have you considered writing a book? I was amazed. I was like, are you changing me to change? Are you asking me to change my job again? You know, who understand what it took me to pass the, uh, you know, my, my, my exams to get my license? Well, she was right. That was my numerology. That was my gifts. And um, I came home and I cried because I said, I study English at the San Francisco Zoo. At the uh, zoo? I, uh, yes, zoo, because um, I know Latin, so I would take uh, words that written in Latin, the animals' names, and translate them into English. That's how I was studying. And I went to a uh, Salvation Army, where I purchased uh, books for 15, 10, 25 cents. And I said, oh my gosh, how can I write the book? English is my third language. You know, I speak Russian, um, I converse in German. I used to be very fluent uh, in German, studied at university. And here I am, have to write the book, but I'm so grateful. Um, I would recommend uh, to everyone to do a numerology chart and to find out your natural gifts, the gift that you were born. Um, so, in 2009, my book was published after five years working on the book. Uh, two years, uh, three years part time while I was working for um, a, a small prestigious uh, PR firm in Washington D.C. that opened the door to meet amazing people, uh, including um, Gloria Herndon, who built. Uh, billion dollar insurance company to uh, very very just in, incredible incredible people in this country and the world um, so 2009 I always buy books to read on the airplane because I used to travel every day at least uh, four days a week so I walk in and there is another red color <laughs> very similar yeah uh, very similar the go giver wow I finished that book. By the time I got to my destination, San Francisco, to Bob Berg, one of the co-authors, and another person is John David Mann, who is an incredible, incredible human being. Uh, because Bob email is very simple. It's bob at berg.com. So, ladies and gentlemen, keep it simple so people can find you. Guess what? He responded back to me, Jeremy, in 10 minutes. And he didn't even pay attention to the compliments I brought, uh, you know, to, to my compliments. He said, no, I wanted to know how you did it. And uh, he opened so many doors for me, and I'm just so uh, very grateful for all his teachings and uh, books that he writes. That led to another color uh, and another creation, um, Go Give or Sell More, and um, Chapter 8 uh, called People. You want, great people's, uh, you want great people's skills? Then be a person, that person. Uh, that's how it starts. So uh, he wrote a story, my story, how oh, wow. to uh, generate and bring close to over $900,000 to PR firm as a fundraiser wow. without any connections in uh, Washington, D.C., but really reaching out to an incredible friend who was my mentor. Um, very important to surround yourself with uh, people who are positive, 
very successful and um, have mentors. Jeremy, yeah. very, very important. And I wanted to say about being mentor and mentee because today I mentor some other people, uh, some other young people. Uh, it's a two-way street. Having a great mentor does not mean that that person is going to run your business or to introduce you to people. No. The mentor to me is really truly a person you trust and you deeply admire and respect and you simply genuinely want their honest opinion. It's the person that you can go and say, I have a problem and this is how I wanted to resolve, but don't bring all your problems. You, right. to, you can talk about that, but be creative and say, this is the solutions. Do you think it's going to work? Do you think it's a good idea? So I know that you've done a lot. You've had a lot of achievements. And I know that you have many more down the road. What's one of the biggest milestones um, that you'd like to talk about that sticks out to you so far? So many, so many. But um, how about um, uh, I will share uh, recently what happened to me a couple of years ago. I was working on a project, uh, commuting from Washington, D.C. to New York a couple of times a week. And uh, it was a product, a beautiful product that was supposed to be manufactured in China. So the day before I was supposed to sign the contract, the deal, at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, I see the dream at 4 a.m that the quality of the product product uh, is not what um, consumers would expect today and pay the price we're asking for. Mm -hmm. Can you say what kind of product it is? Like what, uh, what is, not like the name of it, but what type of product? Uh... Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a jewelry item. Okay, okay. <laughs> So <laughs> I think some of my friends know my passion um, <laughs> for that. So, uh, you know, that was very difficult because I also had people involved working uh, for a year on that project. So I told my business associate about my dream. And the person, uh, Richard, is a, a very savvy business person. Look at me and said, Lana, I trust your intuition. We're not signing the document. So that led, that time, I learned so much about branding and marketing and really focusing on creating the business plan, um, raising capital, everything that you need to build the business. Um, I learned on my own, uh, learned from my mistakes, but that led to a tremendous opportunity that Ampersand Universal, where I am equal partner with that person, Richard, who said, I trust your intuition for not signing the document, and we're a full-service uh, branding and marketing company headquartered in New York and with an office here in California, um, helping famous brands to be uh, legendary and also working with new brands that would like to be famous. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So what, I mean, going from the the trip over to the U.S. and starting from scratch with a $1, what's, a lot of people are trying to overcome their personal challenges. What's one thing you'd recommend the audience to do right now to start to overcome their personal challenges? Always write the, that challenge, uh, that problem down. Uh, write it down because I believe what worked for me is if there is a problem, there is a solution. I, I truly honestly believe. I start working on my challenges and problems one step at a time. So I created a dream board and today I am studying Vastu, the ancient science, it's actually science, um, that teaches you how
how to improve energy in your house or office mm -hmm. to improve your life in different areas of your life. So I am, my teacher is a world-renowned uh, guru, Swami Manjavana G from India. And he and I will be speaking at one of the largest convention. It's called New Living Expo. And I think you're going to interview the creator of that event. Mm -hmm. 16,000 people. Uh, it's a really, truly an honor. And once again, I always wanted to speak at his conference. It was on my dream board last three years. But I had to grow. And my dream board in 2010, I don't know if you can see, but I use a lot of colors, uh, bright colors. In 2010, at, on August 7th at 8.33 p.m. Eastern Time, after I talked to my friend Linda mm -hmm. Brewer, who is a healer, uh, my good friend, in 2010, simply that moment, I wrote a skate, Svetlana Kim. I was asking, who is Svetlana Kim? If Svetlana Kim wants to build a brand, who is she? Mm -hmm. so today, uh, brand is for solopreneur, brands for mom, brands for dads. If you're a student, you can build your own brand. And brand to me, Jeremy, is really this way. When I mention Bob Burke's name, and people will say, oh my gosh, what a great human being. That's the brand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would uh, suggest to people who are listening to us today or will listen to this wonderful interview um, afterwards, what is your brand? How simple that is. Right. And don't overanalyze, don't overthink. Do not try to impress yourself, okay? Just whenever flow comes, write on a piece of brand. The brand could be a person who delivers, you know? When we talk about somebody, Lana, you got to talk to him. He always delivers. He always comes through. Mm. Or you have a brand who would say, like today, you introduced me to this wonderful uh, woman. Uh, you said she is a good person, good people. So I study many successful people, and there's many things are common, uh, including passion, perseverance. But one is a being a good human being. Because when you feel good about yourself, you wanted to help somebody else. When you don't feel good about yourself, there is no room to help somebody else because you need that help yourself. So good people are always successful. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned a few really important things. So the audience should definitely start to identify a problem what they have so they can overcome it and then create a vision board, create some kind of uh, path and think of the question, what's your brand? So you want people to see you and start thinking about that and creating that for yourself, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely. It's um, also, you know, you have to write the goals precisely. Mm-hmm. And, um, oh, the, another thing I even forgot, uh, because I do have many dream boards, and some of them are, you know, this business strategy, because Amherst Universal has um, eight uh, team members. <laughs> we worked together before, so uh, we have eight people. Um, so my vision for myself, and I think the purpose for my life was this, I want to be respected, appreciated, understood and loved I want to be whole so that's what you wrote for yourself that you, uh, you want to uh, be seen yes. every day every day uh, the, the, every day you got to remind yourself you know like we uh, drink water when we're thirsty we eat food when we're hungry our soul needs that food right so what are some of the, the tools or systems you use for your life and business, like on a daily and weekly basis? Um, I'm writing about this in my next book uh, that is in progress. Its uh, working title is uh, In Moment, and um, my literary agent, wonderful uh, creative person, Sherry, who believed in my story, uh, took me under her wings. 
I use mini tool. That would, would really uh, help people uh, to be focused uh, on a big vision, like a dream board. And here is the map. Let's say uh, you want to get to certain destination. Um, well, this is this is my old maps, um, and you know. But you have a vision, big vision for your life or your work. Let's say you want next promotion, or you want to work for. I have a, a, a young talented woman reach out to me. Her dream is to work for Disney. And I said, well, move to California, get the internship, and start working. I mean. So keep a big vision what she wants. So she wants to work for uh, Disney. Okay. And every day she needs to drive through little streets, through little, and maybe she gets lost, go around the block again, cannot find parking, but really keeping the big vision and taking actions every day. That's what is important. It's important that you take actions. So what are some of the uh, things you do, like some of your practices daily that kind of keeps you fresh, keeps you healthy, and allows um, you to, to uh, you know, hit life running? <laughs> I love feeling great. I love, I'm, I'm, every, this is what I practice. I practice uh, uh, a moment of gratitude. So every morning I wake up. And I would check uh, the energy before I open my eyes, before my toes touch the floor. I would say five things I'm grateful for. So this morning I was grateful that I woke up. I'm grateful that I had an opportunity to be with you, to share that moment with you, Jeremy and to share my story with your uh, listeners, with your clients. I was grateful that uh, my parents are doing well. My mom had a little fall, so she is mm. feeling great. I am grateful that I was able to um, contribute and to connect to people today. That is very important to me. And I was grateful that I went to the gym before our interview. Very so, nice. You know, it's a simple things in life that makes our, us happy. And uh, keeping all your senses alive, uh, you have to put some fresh flowers. Uh, I have a little flower from the garden, the pink one, camellia. Um, you got to see the beauty. So if you're working in an office, uh, put some beautiful images on your desk. Uh, smell is very important. It's either the candle or the flowers or maybe perfume because the senses awakens our memories. When you smell something that smells so great, you know, you just want to create this beautiful face. Uh, definitely write your goals daily. Write your goals daily and be precise about that. I do wake up really early. I meditate. I do daily meditation. I work out every day. And Jeremy, since I became a vegetarian, um, I've been eating a lot of greens. Um, I do shakes uh, with uh, protein. I work out every day. Um, I spend time with friends. Um, I love people. I love people, and I think that's how we learn from each other and sharing the wisdom and just being yourself, just, you know, anything that makes you happy. Yeah. Svetlana, I know people are going to really enjoy your stories and your great advice. Before we end, can you tell us just a little bit more about your business and what you're working on now? Um, I'm working on my next book uh, that called Is a Moment, and it's uh, really true about your infinite self that helps you to overcome any challenges in your life. This book that is a blueprint and a guidance how to achieve um, all your goals in life and live a happy and meaningful life. Um, because we're here, we're guests here. And life truly is a precious gift. And each one of us must 
be happy. Just we must be happy. Anytime when I get that low point, I say to myself, we must be happy, be happy. And my guru, Manjavana, reminds me every day, be happy. Um, we are working on a couple of commercials right now, which is mm -hmm. very exciting. It's for a company that builds roofs. What do they build? Uh, roofs for Oh, products. roofs. Oh, okay, got it. And uh, we are approached to work on international project overseas, which is very, very exciting uh, for a few months, uh, creating uh, ads. And how we do that, how different we are at Ampersand Universal, that we tell the story. We reach out and promote your products and services to consumers today through stories. We connect these dots and we touch mm -hmm. the emotion button and that's how they remember you. You know, many times people don't remember my name, honestly. They don't remember the title, but they remember the pearls. And that's how they connect with me on Facebook, on LinkedIn, um, using social media. Yeah, no, I love it. And they will remember these stories. And that's what we do remember, typically. And we can relate to those personal stories that you, you tell. Um, and before we go, I, I want to ask, too, there was something you had emailed me. And it was something about, and I'd never heard the full story about the being the cleaning lady in, um, like for a drug. It was had something to do with a drug dealer. What is, is that? Did I get that right, or is that? Um... <laughs> Almost right. Okay. Um, I, did, I did all kind of odd jobs um, before I received the work permit. I was uh, scrubbing restrooms for. Uh, drug dealers um, on the federal street for five dollars a day. Wow. Yeah, I did that. Okay, I knew I needed to. I didn't know exactly what it was, but <laughs> I mean, it takes a full circle. So, but um, where can people reach out to thank you for just sharing the stories and for your great advice? I think they can, uh, uh, you know, visit your website. Um, they can connect with me on Facebook. Uh, on LinkedIn, uh, you, uh, they can visit my website, SvetlanaKim.com. Okay, perfect. So, so I want to just be the first one to thank you so much for coming and sharing everything. I know they're going to get a lot out of it, as I did, and um, I look forward to talking to you in the future. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.